what you eat. This basically the, the theme of my work, if I wanted to sum it down was or sum it up, would be that nature provides everything that we need. The reality is in a natural environment, we are provided with everything we need to not only survive, but to thrive, to sustain ourselves both in the short term and in the long term. And to get into that, it, it calls us to return to nature, both in our eating habits and uh, the way we're perceiving the world, right? Meaning getting out barefoot into a natural environment that a lot of us are blessed to be in in Hawaii, right? I'm from LA. And it's a slightly different dynamic there. You know, there's a saying that everything you need to, to sustain yourself is about five miles away from you at all times. And I find that to be an interesting theme. You know, in LA, it's like you kind of think, well, there's a shopping market, you know, less than five minutes or five miles. There's a gas station, you know, we kind of think in those terms. When you're out here, you have to kind of change that perceptual filter and think like, okay, well, there's that, that banana tree right over there. You know, I can feed myself, I can get a certain amount or volume of sustenance to survive and thrive until I get to the next tree, right? There's a natural pharmacopoeia in nature. Basically, that nature has within it, with, encoded within it, its own database of information or references that we can all pick from if we make that whatever ails us nature has a solution for. That's basically the bottom line to my work, the theme of it, and then from that philosophy, everything else sprouts. What you're looking at right here, does anyone know what this picture is? Has anyone ever seen this kind of picture before? Is it like a neuron? Yeah, it's called Curlian Photography, and in about the, the 1920s, a man named Samuel Curlian created what's called a Curlian camera, or Curlian Photography. And what's so amazing about this is that it actually depicts the ultraviolet lighting coming off any living organism, any living uh, being, animal, human, even conductive metals, for example. It shows the, the electromagnetism that's pulsating off of it, right? Who here is aware that our human eyes don't actually see the full, broad spectrum of lighting, right? We, we pick up certain... Uh, broadbands, but we don't pick up the full thing, right? Certain animals can see different color waves, things like that, right? Some of us may have it to certain different extents, but this camera actually allows us to see the electrical pulsations or emanations that are coming right off it. So this gives you a completely different perspective, at least it gave me a completely different perspective about six years ago when I first saw an image like mushroom from the same camera except this one is inorganic, still has life, still, yeah. still glowing, right? Cool. But this one is completely pesticide, herbicide, fungicide, rodenticide, insecticide, free, right? All of it. And you can see the clear difference, right? All right, let's move on right here. This is another beautiful example of that photography um, in a slice of an organic orange. Right? And I think what's so amazing about this depiction is it shows the symmetry of nature. There's a subtle organizing factor, a fractal organization. Um, sometimes we call that sacred geometry. And it shows up in all of nature. I mean, earlier today I was going through the, through the yard and just kind of looking at the plants, just, just in, with innocent perception, just looking at it and noticing that the symmetry, the shaping, the organization of these plants is absolutely perfect. And I start to notice that there's very interesting similarities between plants and humans, right? We both have what's called a vascular system, cardiovascular system, right? The only difference is on plants generally, their vascular system shows up on the outside. Like our veins, our arteries, our capillaries are on the inside, right? Except I have a few that kind of you can see a little bit, right? But there's skin coating over it. Um, if you take like a leaf, for example, it's very obvious that its veins and its, its whole vascular system basically that's transmitting chlorophyll, plant blood, it's showing up more on the outside, but we're very similar to them. Photons, biophotons, basically concentrated sunlight. Okay, so this is really going back to the basics of the basics. Everything that produces energy, basically anything that's living, gets its energy 
or from one originating source, which is the sun, right? And we've all heard of photosynthesis, right? The interesting thing about that is a plant, for example, can manufacture almost all of its nutrients, almost everything. It can manufacture its fatty acids, its amino acids, its protein, its cellulose fiber, right, its carbohydrates, all the things that we think of in the nutrition world like you know, these bulk nutrients that we need for energy. A plant basically can manufacture all that from the photons that it gets from the light and then transmits that into itself, creates building blocks out of it, and then it sucks up through its rooting system minerals from the ground, right? And then that's how it constructs itself. We eat those plants and we get all that to construct ourselves. 